Are you looking to buy a Sony camera or even perhaps upgrade to another one, but confused with all the different models that exist? Don't worry, Jason Vong, that's me by the way, it's got you covered because you can't go wrong with Jason Vong. In the end, it doesn't matter which model you end up getting because I got a playlist full of guides with helpful tutorials on how to set up your camera to take better images and videos with your Sony Alpha. Click up here to check it out or find the link in the description box below. So first things first, this guide is specifically on Sony APS-C cameras or otherwise known as crop sensor frame cameras. Now you might have heard of full frame sensor cameras versus crop frame sensor cameras. What are the differences? Well, to keep it short and simple for you, Full frame cameras have the bigger sensor, making it good for extreme low light and gives more blur to the background, commonly known as maximum bokeh. But these advantages are very, very much achievable on crop sensor cameras with some tinkering. And crop sensor cameras actually have a few advantages of their own over full frame cameras. They are typically smaller and lighter, and the ecosystem of lenses are less expensive compared to full frame lenses. So if you're just starting out in photos and videos, do not concern yourself with the differences in sensor sizes. Crop sensor cameras are more than good enough. In 2019, Sony expanded their APS-C line of cameras, which is a good and a bad thing. Good because there are different models out there at different price points, so more options for you to choose from. The bad is that there are a lot of different models out there, so it can get very confusing. If we look at all the cameras in order, it may seem like the higher the number, the newer the model, and the better it is, right? For instance, the A6500 should technically be better than the Sony A6400, right? No, that is absolutely not the case. The Sony A6400 is actually a 2019 release, the newer camera with way better tech compared to the Sony A6500, which was a 2016 release. So if we look at all the cameras in a chart categorized by years, it should be a lot easier to figure out which cameras we need to be focusing on. So why did Sony go back and forth in their numbering convention? I don't know. But luckily for you, I'm a huge Sony geek, so I can point you in the right direction. And all of these cameras here have the following in common. They're all 24 megapixel cameras capable of shooting RAW plus JPEG. And by today's standard, 24 megapixels is good enough, especially for social media photos, prints, and even large billboards. They're all capable of 11 frames per second, except the A5100. So they're excellent for fast paced action scenarios like sports, wildlife, and cars. In the video department, they're all capable of 1080p HD up to 60 frames per second. While 4K is becoming the standard, most people are watching content on their phone. So 1080p is honestly good enough for that. And finally, all of these cameras have continuous autofocus. Sony has some of the best tracking autofocus, and they were one of the first ones to put human eye autofocus, which all of these models have. All these models have continuous face tracking autofocus in video video mode, perfect for anybody who's looking for something to vlog with. In fact, this, the autofocus, is where it greatly varies from model to model. And you want to consider the newer model cameras just because they have the most up-to-date technology. <laughs> Duh, obviously. But these cameras with the updated tech have way better autofocus, better color science, and better usage of battery efficiency. So think of the 2014 cameras as a basic photography camera. With the newer releases, it sort of stacks or adds on top of what currently exists. So with the 2016 cameras, they introduce 4K video, continuous human eye autofocus, and S-Log profiles. Again, if you're coming in new to cameras, I wouldn't worry about S-Log profiles too much. And with the 2019 cameras, they actually improve the human eye autofocus and introduce an AI system to it. They also threw in animal eye autofocus, which makes taking photos of your pet so much easier. And you of course get the S-Log profiles and the HLG profiles. Again, don't worry about those too much if you're new around here. And these newer cameras have better skin tones than the 2014 cameras. Warmer skin tones that a majority of the people actually prefer. And because of the better battery efficiency, it's going to be great for video shooters who plan on doing longer video recording, especially in 4K. And by the way, there are no 30 minute recording limit in the 2019 models. The 2016 and the 2019 models have a mic jack, but only the 2019 models have a flip up screen. 
With that understanding in mind, when choosing the right camera, you have to be asking yourself, what would you be using it for? While all of the new fancy tech does sound pretty nice, it may not be worth the extra money, especially if you won't take full advantage of it. So here are my best recommendations based on each model. So my number one choice for anybody who's looking to buy a Sony APS-C camera would be the A6400, hands down the best hybrid system for the dollar. Whether you're shooting photos or videos, this camera can do both extremely well. The A6400 has 99% of the current tech that I was talking about, including animal eye autofocus, human eye autofocus, subject tracking, and video picture profiles. And this camera was often compared to the Sony A6500 because the A6500 has one thing that the A6400 does not have, which is in-body image stabilization, which honestly is only really helpful if you're shooting videos handheld. And because the A6500 is almost priced too similarly to the A6400, in my opinion, it is not worth getting the older camera in favor of that in-body image stabilization. The newer tech of the A6400 great outbeats the A6500. So if you really need some sort of stabilization when you're shooting videos with the A6400, instead I would advise you to get lenses that have OSS, which stands for Optical Steady Shot, lenses with built-in stabilization. And you can tell if the lenses have Optical Steady Shot, it's labeled on the box and it's labeled on the lens. Now if we're talking about the best hybrid system overall and money wasn't an issue then go for the Sony a6600. Think of this as the pro camera. You wanna get this for the bigger and better battery and the in-body image stabilization. The bigger battery is the same as the ones that are being used in the recent full frame cameras, which would double your shoot time. Honestly, while I do believe it is the best hybrid system overall, it's kind of an overkill if you're just doing photography with it. This camera has features that sort of lean more towards serious video creators. But hey, if you do both and you really value that extra battery life, I think the A6600 is fantastic. And I say it's catered more to video shooters because this is the only APS-C camera with a headphone jack. Extremely helpful if you need to monitor audio. And the in-body image stabilization does come in handy when you go handheld shooting videos. You have that flexibility of using any lenses, even if they don't have optical steady shot. The grip and the size of the A6600 is much larger compared to the other models, but if having a more solid grip is important to you, then go for the A6600. And if you're someone who has a full frame system already and you wanted something that's a little bit less expensive to complement your full frame setup, the A6600 would be that great complement. Especially because the A6600 also shares the same battery size as its full frame brothers. However, if this is gonna be your one and only camera and you're only going for the camera for its form factor, then I would say go for the other models for the simplicity and lightness. But let's just say you don't need all the fluff. No animal eye autofocus, no 4K videos, no flip up screen. You're just trying to save on some money, but you still are looking for something decent for photography. Then the A6000 is still a fantastic choice. It still has the same megapixels as all of the other cameras. It's also 11 frames per second. It does have human eye autofocus only, but not continuous human eye autofocus. So your subject needs to be standing still, which shouldn't be too much of an issue because majority of the portrait shots are still shots anyway. I think you already know this, but just to remind you again, the A6000 does not have animal eye autofocus, but that shouldn't stop you from trying to take photos of your dogs and cats. Again, no 4K videos, but there is 1080p up to 60 frames per second, which is honestly good enough. And comparing to its successors, this camera does not have a mic jack. So you will not be able to plug in an external microphone for better audio. And because this camera is five years old, you can actually find them in different colors. That sort of makes this camera pretty unique. For a 2014 camera, the A6000 ain't too shabby. But if you are a beginner with a little more money to spend, then I would actually pivot you more towards the Sony A6100. This is the best budget beginner hybrid camera. 
the quality of life features that you'd be spending the extra $200 on on this camera is going to be so much more worth it. It's the same body and design as the A6000, but with all of the updated tech that I was talking about earlier. Continuous human eye autofocus, animal eye autofocus, 4K videos, better colors, better battery efficiency. For $200 more, you'll be paying for something that will last three to five years. So when you are making a purchasing decision, especially when you're buying a camera, you'll be spending a lot of money. It's good to try to save on a little bit of money like using a cashback website called Rakuten. If you've ever heard of Ebates, they essentially rebrand themselves to Rakuten and they're actually sponsoring this video. Along with that, they are co-sponsoring a $100 Visa gift card giveaway on my YouTube channel. So stick around to see how you can win. And just to demonstrate how Rakuten works, this is the largest cashback website which partners with over 2,500 of the biggest name brands like Best Buy, eBay, and Amazon. And it's super simple. All you have to do is just get this extension for your Google Chrome, which will bring you back cashback, coupons, and promo codes all for free. And if you're not using Google Chrome, you can just click through the links found on Rakuten and then shop on the store's website like you normally would. It doesn't cost you anything extra. It just takes that one extra step to make sure you click on that cash back button. After that, you would just go ahead and do your shopping. And after a while, that cash back will come back into your Rakuten account for you to use in a future purchase. And if you sign up with my referral code, which is completely free, by the way, you get a $10 welcome bonus after you make a $25 or more purchase, which is super easy when you're buying cameras. And to enter for that $100 Visa gift card giveaway, all you have to do is just sign up with my referral code first and go to gleam.io. The link is in the description box below and the winner will be contacted directly. With Black Friday and Cyber Monday coming up, Rakuten is doing a double cashback with all of their partnered stores. So make sure you use Rakuten to save on some money and get some cash back. So before I get into talking about the A6300 and the A6500, I wanna shift gear really quickly talking about used camera equipment. Now I know a lot of people aren't gonna be okay using secondhand equipment, I get it. But for those of you who are curious, buying used gear is actually another great way of saving on a ton of money. When I first got started, I bought a couple of used cameras and a lot of used lenses just to save on some money, but I was buying things that are pretty relevant that came out for at least a couple of years, nothing too outdated. And with these used gear, I was able to hone in my craft and my photography and my videography. Now I just buy new camera as a hobby. <laughs> Just kidding, just kidding, but I haven't had any issues buying used camera gear. I also buy from reputable sites as well, such as uh, Amazon Warehouse, uh, eBay, B&H, and Adorama. Just because if anything does go wrong, there is customer service support on their end to help me sort it out. So if I do need to make an exchange or a trade or get my full refund back, it is definitely 100% possible. But a fair warning though, since the A6600 and the A6100 barely came out this month, I don't think you'll find any of them in the used market. However, for the other models, you will see a pretty massive price drop. For instance, you can find plenty of used A6300 and A6500 in the market. The Sony A63 and A6500 came out months apart in 2016, so spec-wise, they are fairly similar. These are very capable cameras, but I wouldn't recommend buying them new, especially with the newer models that are available in the market right now. The only difference with the A65 and the A6300 is the in-body image stabilization and the touchscreen. And honestly, the touchscreen is kind of whatever on the A6500, but the in-body image stabilization gives you the flexibility of using lenses without optical steady shot, which would be great for video if you plan on doing a lot of handheld shots. Otherwise, just use lenses with optical steady shot with the A6300 if you plan on shooting videos. These models do have continuous eye autofocus, but no animal eye AF. They do have face detection autofocus in video, which is great. Unfortunately though, if you do plan on shooting 4K videos with them, the screen on these models tend to dim, making them really hard to see in broad daylight outside. And these cameras are a little more prone to overheating compared to their successor models. Now, because retail stores are still selling this camera, I figured people will no doubt will still be looking up the Sony A5100. 
The A5100 is a good little vloggy camera. It's the only older 2014 model with a flip up screen. So you can say this model was kind of ahead of its time. Honestly, it's an inexpensive interchangeable lens camera. It has the same tech as the A6000, just without the extra buttons and the viewfinder. It's great for photos and it's great for 1080p videos with very basic autofocus system. Unfortunately though, no mic jack. So you won't be able to plug in an external microphone for better audio. Now let's just say you're someone with one of the older model Sony cameras and you're thinking about upgrading to the Sony A6600. If you're coming from an A5100 or A6000, sure, absolutely, you're gonna feel a massive difference when you upgrade to the 6600. Hell, if you even go to the 6400, it feels like a giant step up. But if you're a 63 or 64 or even a 6500 users and you're thinking about jumping to the A6600, in my opinion, it is not worth it. It is not worth it in my opinion because you should either just go on to full frame or wait until the next APS-C model with 4K60 and some newer technology that gets implemented in there, maybe like 20 frames per second or something like that, I don't know. However, if you really, really need it, like having a bigger battery would be helpful for your workflow, having that headphone jack will be uh, helpful for your workflow, and that in-body image stabilization and you plan on using it from now until the following year to come, then sure, get the Sony A6600. Otherwise, keep working with what you got and let's wait for the next APS-C camera from Sony. So moving on to lenses, I don't wanna make this video too long, so drop in the comments down below if you wanna see a more dedicated Sony APS-C lens buying guide. Until then, we're gonna focus on some of the kit lenses that get bundled with these cameras. Especially if you're a beginner, you really don't need other lenses outside of these kit lenses while you're trying to learn photography or videography. So the first bundle kit lens that I can highly recommend is the 18 to 135 millimeter lens. If your budget can afford this lens, this is honestly the best and the most versatile lens to get. I believe this lens came out around 2017, 2018, and it's surprisingly sharp. There are a lot of reviews raving about this lens. It's not that big, it's not heavy at all, it's perfect for travel especially. But if you're really strapped on cash right now and you will consider adding new lenses to your arsenal in the future, then the kit lens that you absolutely have to get because you won't be able to shoot photos or videos with the camera only, is the 16 to 50 millimeter. This one's a little bit older, but it's incredibly, incredibly tiny. At 16 millimeter, it's wide enough to do some selfie style vlogging. Now it won't have the same reach as the previous mentioned lens. So if you really need a longer zoom, but again, you're trying to save on that dough, then you might want to consider adding the 55 to 210 millimeter as well. Honestly, you can find a bundle that includes both the 16 to 50 and the 55 to 210 lens. These two lenses here are actually cheaper than the 18 to 135. Again, these are older lenses, but still extremely good enough for learning photography and video. Again, they're incredibly small and lightweight, and the 55 to 210 does have a further zoom. The downside is you will have to carry two lenses, so if you want it to be nimble with the best versatility, go for the 18 to 135. And of course, once you buy the cameras, you're gonna need some SD cards and some extra batteries, right? So here are some must-have accessories. Starting off with the memory cards, these are the ones that I recommend, the SanDisk Extreme. These I find have a good mixture of price, size, and reliability. There are cheaper SD cards out there, but it's risky to use cards that have a higher rate of failure. Now, there aren't a single SD card out there that has zero failure rate, so please back up your content as soon as you can. For size, I do recommend 64 gigabytes if you plan on shooting a good mixture of photos and 4K videos. Moving on to battery, Sony original batteries are a bit expensive, but they generally last the longest. But if you're on a budget though, I recommend getting these Wasabi third-party batteries. They usually come in two with a charger, and it's still cheaper than the one Sony battery. So Amazon likes to do these bundled goodies that usually includes a tripod, a camera bag, SD cards, a dust blowers, and whatnots, which these are all right. Just make sure you're not overpaying too much for these accessories versus just getting the cameras and lenses themselves. Because let's be honest, most of those accessories are garbage anyways. Rather, if your budget permits, here are my personal recommendations for the accessories that you should be getting for your Sony APS-C camera. For camera strap, don't use the one that came with your camera. It's a pain to put on and take off. Instead, get yourself a Peak Design leash. These are amazing. They have a quick release system so you can take off your strap quickly in case they get in the way of your shoot. 
And if you plan on vlogging a whole lot, I suggest getting this small rig Koshu Relocator. This is more for Sony A61, 64, and A6600 users because they have a flip-up screen. This shifts the position of the mic to the side so it doesn't block the screen. It's a cheap $15 solution, and for the mic, I do recommend the Rode Video Micro. When you're using an external mic like this, you're going to be getting way better audio for your video. For vlogging tripod, I would recommend either the Manfrotto Pixie tripod or this Joby Gorillapod. Both are lightweight and small. In terms of camera bag, honestly, it's really hard to recommend one just because they can get very expensive. But if you want my personal recommendation, I highly recommend the Peak Design Sling 5L. This is great for APS-C cameras especially. The 5L is big enough to hold a handful of APS-C lenses. Regardless if you get this bag or not, make sure you choose a camera bag that you actually like because this will be the camera bag you'll be taking out with you when you're traveling and when you're just out shooting photos. Yeah, that's what a camera bag's for. So be sure to tag me on Instagram at Jason V Media when you make your decision. Even better if you can film yourself buying the camera. That would be awesome. And again, once you get your camera, come back to my playlist filled with resources for Sony Alpha cameras, ranging from setting up your camera, best lenses to get, and techniques on getting better images and videos. Thanks for watching, guys. Happy shopping, happy holidays, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.